Okay, folks, let's uh, go ahead and, this, and in this lesson, we're going to prepare our scene for final render. We're going to be uh, doing a lot of stuff. Actually, it's going to be uh, maybe quite a long lesson, but I'm trying to uh, go over it and finish it as soon as possible. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to do is to add the object buffers uh, to different elements. I want to have one object buffers for all the uh, elements here, these uh, uh, clones that filling the room. Uh, the bag, the clones that filling the bag, this logo, the bag itself, and that are the main elements uh, that we uh, kind of want to have uh, a certain uh, particular path for them. So if you want, for example, to extract them and uh, use them, we can simply do that. Now, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to uh, add a Cinema 4D tag, compositing tag. Go to your object buffer and enable object buffer one uh, and control drag this on the bag on the clone filling the bag and on the box logo these four elements are the main elements that we have here and now for the clones uh, in the room i'm going to enable object buffer two for the clones filling the bag i'm going to enable object buffer three for the bag, I'm going to enable object buffer 4. And for the box logo, I'm going to enable object buffer 5. Okay, now this is great. And the next thing I'm going to do uh, before testing our multi pass, I'm just going to quickly add those five object buffers. 4, and there is 5, 1. Let's change this to 3. Four and five and let's go ahead and I'm going to add the uh, oh uh, we need reflection in case we really did a complete multi-pass render I mean if we want to uh, really combine the passes in After Effects this is a possibility that we might do or we might just use our render uh, that we uh, kind of uh, output it here but uh, in case we just need the reflection and ambient occlusion and we also have the passes so we can combine those and also I'm going to add the depth right now and I'm going to my camera in the detail tab make sure to enable uh, DOF depth of field map rear blur and let's go to our up view here now I'm going to change the uh, focus point here really simply and quickly just I think I'm gonna put it on about here okay now okay guys now let's go ahead and about here is a good point and for the at this end point, we're just going to put it somewhere here, okay? You can see some of these guys is, uh, out there, okay. And now, I think we are ready to actually test our first render and see what's going on. Now, I'm going to be using the physical renderer because we have so many blurry and um, uh, reflective stuff. And uh, physical renderer, I tested, it's, uh, uh, it's really quicker. It's uh, three times quicker than th standard renders in this case even though it might produce a slightly different result. But, uh, you know, let's actually render it with standard render uh, quickly and see where we are. Before that, I'm going to uh, change the anti-aliasing to best 1x1, one 4x4. One, four four. I'm going to my ambient occlusion, even though we're going to be using um, uh, the physical render and it's not going to change a lot at this point. But let's go ahead and change this. Uh, and for the global illumination, we're going to be using uh, actually just the low setting would be enough if I if I was about to go and really render this out for production I would go through and really for example I change the sample at least to medium I change the record density uh, to uh, medium at least the light mapping to at least uh, five to six thousand but for this case let's go ahead and quickly render it and see what we're going to get as you can see the output size is for 50 which is I'm gonna render in 960 by 540 uh, feel free to render it 
uh, uh, 1280 by 720, but I'm just going to render 960 by 540 just to make sure we we're gonna have a quick render. It's you know 300 frames, and uh, you know it's gonna take a lot if we we really have to try and uh, make our render time as quick as possible, especially for this tutorial uh, to just uh, get the job done as quickly as possible. Let's go ahead and uh, render. I'm going to my render setting. Make sure the frame range is set to current frame, and let's quickly go ahead and render this. Okay guys, so the render is finished and as you can see we have a few problems. First of all, it took about 4 minutes and 21 seconds to render a 960 by 540 image, which is just horrible. Uh, you know, if we were going for a production and we had a render farm or whatever, we could go with this setting and, you know, uh, make the size bigger, full HD, you know, and uh, that would take forever on this machine. So. Uh, what I'm gonna do, and another problem is you can see the ambient occlusion on the wall is so problematic. You can see the ambient occlusion from the uh, geometry that we created kind of affects the render and really makes it unnatural on the wall. Uh, we can possibly go ahead and uh, disable ambient occlusion. You can see on the sofa here, we can uh, we kind of need ambient occlusion on the floor, on this table, maybe on this laptop, uh, and really nowhere else. To be honest with you and we can go ahead and quickly do this let's uh, close this picture viewer now what I'm gonna do is uh, to uh, go ahead and actually uh, do something about the uh, uh, ambient occlusion we are gonna uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to right click and uh, choose compositing tag in the tag you can disable the uh, scene by AO okay now we need uh, our ambient occlusion on some of our uh, stuff for example floor table the laptop holder so I'm gonna go here and uh, on these uh, the floor definitely needs to have a compositing tag I think that will our write that uh, parent compositing tag okay let's uh, go ahead and uh, our walls don't need that we need a compositing tag of uh, for our table and for this uh, laptop here and uh, another thing I'm gonna do is to change my uh, render to physical render to physical that will kind of get give us a much more quicker render in this case go to physical setting and uh, what I'm gonna do is to go ahead I don't need any shadow subdivision because I don't have any shadow in my scene I'm going to my ambient occlusion and uh, increase this now uh, because we want a quick render I'm just uh, go ahead and uh, change this to 4 but for a better uh, render and a bit high quality ambient occlusion you need to go at least to 6 but uh, it's gonna give us a uh, you know uh, longer render so we're gonna be just uh, stay with four in this case and uh, blurriness subdivision I'm going to actually increase this a bit because uh, a lot of these uh, settings are a lot of these materials have blurriness and I kinda wanna have a nice uh, blurry uh, surface here and that's about the physical render here ambient occlusion as you can see the settings are disabled here and I think we are ready to go ahead and uh, see uh, what we're gonna have uh, this time and uh, let's see and hopefully this time we are gonna have a better render now you can see generally speaking the render is much more quicker than what it was before and uh, Now you can see you okay, now there is no uh, ugly ambient occlusion on the walls because we simply disabled them and we still have the ambient occlusion on the floor as you can see on the table around the laptop here and that is great when this is a bit problematic here and we can disable it but it's really not going to be that uh, visible and I think uh, this is just uh, great here and the render as you can see is much more quicker than uh, here that was four minutes and 21 seconds and now hopefully we'll be finished in one minute and let's see 
Okay. One minutes and 17 seconds. So, uh, look at this. It's a huge change uh, in render time and really not a lot of uh, quality uh, uh, change. You can see uh, we are in a very good position. Now, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our passes here. We have the reflection pass and we have the ambient occlusion pass. That's, as you can see, it's a bit uh, grainy. Uh, and if, but uh, I think it's going to be enough for this case. If you want to have a much more better render quality uh, and uh, you're not in a rush like me, you can go ahead and increase the ambient occlusion to at least six, as I told you. Now we have the object buffer one which is everything in our scene. Now using the object buffer one, the ambient occlusion and the reflection, we simply, if we want, we can separate the uh, uh, these elements from the uh, image. So if we want, we can simply use, uh, uh, you know, composite everything together inside After Effects and uh, kind of build our uh, whole uh, render again using the different passes that we have. Now, uh, we have different passes, if I uh, take a look at the, uh, let me select the right render here. Now you can see we have the depth of field, this is a, I think this is a nice, nice depth of field. We, we, we have a lot of quality, even though I think it would be better if we go a bit further. But I think, generally speaking, we are in a good position. I don't know, I really think the ambient occlusion should be a bit further away. But uh, object buffer 5, object buffer 4 is the back, object buffer 3, object buffer 2, object buffer 1. Now, I think this uh, this is not too bad at all. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and just simply and quickly adjust the ambient, the depth of field, and hopefully we're going to get a better render this time. I'm just going to actually uh, hide uh, these uh, forces here so we have a bit cleaner scene. Let me quickly go ahead and render and see what we're going to get this time. Okay, so uh, the render is finished and uh, hopefully if we go to our depth of field we should see a better... Yeah, I think I, I, I like this one a bit more. And, uh, okay, you can see these guys are going to be in focus a bit more. And I think this is a better uh, depth of field map, generally speaking. And, uh, okay, guys, let's see what else do we need to do. I think, uh, really, it's time to go ahead and... Uh, just define where you want to save your files in these let's go ahead and change this frame range to all frame and uh, save it define where you want to save your files uh, we uh, want to uh, save a multi-pass image make sure to disable multi-layer file and also we don't need any compositing project file really in this case and i'm gonna save it uh, as uh, PSD and I'm just going to 16 bit here and the same thing for my multipass just go ahead and define where you want to save and uh, you just uh, you, you really you, that's what you do and uh, uh, there is nothing uh, remain here when the render is finished well, let's actually go ahead and quickly define the place that you want to save these guys so let's see Let's go ahead and okay. So I just create a folder, call it render, and let's uh, name it box uh, tutorial. Okay, and save that. And for the multi pass, I'm just going to uh, in the same folder. I'm going to name it MP box tutorial. Okay. And yep. Actually, 
let's just make sure we have the right name here capitalization isn't right let's go ahead fax tutorial okay now that's right and uh, we can start render and uh, I'll see you when the render is finished inside After Effects and we are gonna composite everything together and hopefully have a nice uh, rendered image inside After Effects. See you there.